let's talk about meal prep. I'm gonna show you some of my favorite recipes for meal prep that are not only gonna save you time, money, eat healthier, but it's gonna relieve some stress throughout the day so that way you're not really worrying too much about what you eat, need to eat next. I like to start off by boiling some eggs in that really nice soft set ramen style egg. For this, I am using my Joule sous vide machine, but feel free just to use a large pot with boiling water like we normally do on the channel and make yourself some nice soft boiled eggs. The Joule just makes it a bit easier for me. Now I do like to make sure that all of my eggs are at room temperature and I am going to soft boil one flat worth of eggs which comes out to 30 eggs. While that water is heating up, we're also going to make some brown rice. I'm using six cups worth of brown rice for this in my very large rice maker. You don't need to really wash brown rice after the first time, so just make sure it has enough water and start cooking it. Now the next thing I'm going to make is some turkey chili. This isn't really a turkey chili in a sense because it isn't very wet like a chili would be, but I do love making this. I'm gonna need one diced onion and the second onion is actually going to be sliced for some pickled onions we're going to make as well. I like to make sure that a lot of my mise en place is done at the same time so that way I can save as much time as possible. Once you have all of your sliced onions and your diced onions ready to go, place them into your container of choice making sure they are separate so that way you know which one to use for which recipe. The diced onions are going to be used for this turkey chili. Now grab yourself a bowl and a strainer and we're going to strain out one can worth of pinto beans, one can worth of black olives, one can worth of black beans, and once you have this all strained out, discard that liquid and give that just a small rinse. The reason for this is because I really don't like the flavors out of that. Now we have to get our turkey meat ready. I am just using some ground turkey for this. You can use whatever you want. You can just use beef if you really wanted to to save on cost. And to spice this up, I am using some spices that were sent to me. This is my secret weapon, being able to use pre-made spices so that way you aren't wasting too much time on grinding your own spices unless you really want to. Once you have your meat really well seasoned, which sounds very dirty, Make sure you do give it a toss so that way it's fully incorporated. This spice in particular had a lot of garlic, onion, thyme, rosemary, and a few other herbs in it that really, really played well with what I was going for. So once I had everything nicely tossed and seasoned, this is when we're going to start cooking this uh, so-called chili. Now in a large pot, add in some olive oil and then the wrong onions. Dude, those are not the onions you're supposed to cook. You put the wrong onions in the pot. Well, now that we can't really save this, we're going to slightly cook these onions and remove them from the pot so we can just use them later for now. They're going to be marinated onions instead. Now place the pot back onto the stove with some more olive oil and place the right onions into that pot to start cooking them down. You don't actually want to cook these too hard. You just want to make sure that they are slightly translucent before you start adding in your turkey meat. I like to add this in smaller little dollops worth just so that way it breaks down a bit easier while you're working with it in your pot. I season mine again with more of that magic spice plus a little bit of cayenne because Chef John, you want to really try to brown this turkey meat. Now as I was cooking this turkey chili, I noticed that Rindo was ready and the water was ready to go for my eggs which you can see on that other side. Now very carefully using a strainer, place in your eggs directly into your hot water making sure you do not crack them. This is why I like using a strainer for this so that way they go in a bit more gently. Now after starting the sous vide, we just have to let that play out. Now back to the turkey chili, we are able to get some browning on this, but my stove doesn't actually get that hot, so we're just gonna roll with it. Now dump in all of your strained beans and olives right into that meat, and after giving it a toss, toss in your favorite chilies. I'm just using a can of Ortega chilies, but really that's totally up to you. I'm also tossing in a can of El Pato, which is basically an enchilada sauce, and it just adds a nice depth of flavor to it, as well as that tomato flavor we're looking for. Now give this another toss, and then we're going to hit this with one cart worth of beef stock. Realistically, you can use chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, whatever stock you want. You just wanna make sure you almost cover up the meat with that stock. Now we are going to let this simmer with the lid on for the next two hours or so. While that's simmering, grab yourself a bowl of ice water because Rindo is ready to go. Once your eggs are ready to go, we're going to carefully pull these out of the bain marie. Remember, these are gonna be smoking hot, but you do wanna ice these down so that way you can start shocking the eggs so they don't continue to cook. Once you have all of your eggs in your ice water, cool it down until the ice melts. Now I have to make some of that marinating vinegar for those onions we had cooked. And for this, I am using rice vinegar. You want about 300 milliliters worth of rice vinegar. And since I use it quite often, I ended up buying just a gallon of it because meal prep. Now to the rice vinegar, we are going to add a few bay leaves and then the last dab. Now you can add in just some peppercorns or some chili or spices of choice, but I decided to use this because I have it. To this, add in just a pinch of sugar and bring this over to the stove to dissolve that sugar in that vinegar. Now these are the onions that we mistakenly cooked, which is gonna be fine at this point. It's, it's just gonna be marinated onions. Cover those onions with that vinegar and let them just hang out until they start to cool down. These are your now marinated onions. Now in a large bowl, we're going to start making our kufta. 
I call them kufta, but you can make meatloaf or meatballs or whatever you want. But since I'm going for that kufta flavor, I am using this tiger's eye blend, which is turmeric, garlic, onion, cayenne, tomato, garam masala, coriander, cardamom, sea salt, and black pepper. I also added a bunch of cured sumac to this because I love that flavor. Now combine all of those spices into the meat very thoroughly so you don't have any weird pockets of spice in your ground meat. Now to the ground beef mixture, I am going to add in one whole shallot. The shallot is going to be very nicely minced, so this way it incorporates itself very well into the ground beef. Once you have all of your shallots diced up, we're also going to chop up about five cloves worth of garlic. Once it's slightly chopped, combine them both together so this way you save yourself some time, and this way they do mince together very, very well. Once minced together, add in all of your shallot and your garlic directly to your meat mixture, and we're also going to add in two eggs to help bind it. You don't necessarily need to add the eggs if you don't really want to, but I like adding the eggs to have more of a firm patty. Once your eggs are cracked into your bowl with all of your meat and your shallots and your garlic, make sure you do combine those eggs very, very well so you don't have any stringy bits of egg in your meat. I said meat way too many times. Now we do like to taste test this in particular because once you cook it, that's pretty much it. So grab a small portion of your ground beef and place this into a skillet over a medium high heat just to sear it off. You don't really need to cook this in any particular way. You're just just going to taste it. This allows you to give it a good taste test for salt, or if you wanna add more chilies or spices, and that's totally up to you. Once you have it cooked off, split it up and just give this a good taste. I noticed that it was cooked really, really well, and this, in this case, well done, but I was just going for flavor. This lacked a tremendous amount of salt, so I went ahead and added more salt to make sure it was well seasoned. After combining this, grab a sheet tray lined with aluminum foil to save yourself some cleanup later, trust me. And once you have that lined with aluminum foil, measure these out into large meatballs. Now, if you are actually measuring them out, measure them out to 150 grams, and then form them into this log shape. This is kind of the style I like doing them in because I can use them for sandwiches if I really want to. Once you have them all shaped out, place this into your oven at 375 degrees for about 15 minutes. While that's cooking, our egg ice has melted, so remove all of the eggs from the water and place them into the carton you had used. I wanted to see what these looked like, so I cracked one open and I realized that due to this temperature drop on the sous vide because I added so many eggs, I lost some of the white and they were harder to peel, but the inside was really it was really nice. I couldn't even I couldn't even crack the yolk, but you know what? They were good. Now I did realize I forgot to add a tomato product into my chili, so I added in one can worth of tomato sauce directly to the chili and gave it a good stir and just let it continue cooking until really, until it was done. Now that some of the proteins are out of the way, we are going to work with some of the vegetables, and for that, I am using Brussels sprouts. Just make sure you do clean these right out of the bag. I have never seen a more mean mug than that. Once your Brussels sprouts are clean, we are going to work with these in two different ways. First, I'm going to remove the stems and then split some of them in half. You can go about 50-50 for this, but that's totally up to you. After cutting half of my Brussels sprouts in half, my timer for my kufta went off, so I made sure I pulled those out of the oven and I let them rest on top of the stove before working with them any further. And now that the oven was clear, I was able to roast off some of the Brussels sprouts as well. So I hit this with some olive oil, with some salt and black pepper, gave them a good toss, and popped them onto a sheet tray with some aluminum foil, and then into the oven for 25 minutes at 375 Fahrenheit. While those Brussels sprouts were roasting, I take some of the whole Brussels sprouts and use my Japanese mandolin, link it down below if you want to pick one up, they're super handy, and start shredding this into a coleslaw. I like using Brussels sprouts for slaw, but it is a bit more work than just using a large head of cabbage. The biggest reason for this is because now I can use the same vegetable for two different applications. Once I have all of my Brussels sprouts cut up into this slaw, I want to add just a few more things so it's not just plain Brussels sprouts. Now the additions are totally up to you and I like to keep mine simple, so I'm just using a few carrots for this as well as some green onions. For the carrots, I am still using the Japanese mandolin and this has an attachment to allow me to make some julienne cuts. It isn't the best for this and I would recommend being very careful and using a guard if you need to, but as I was able to kind of figure it out, this mandolin did help me save some time for these julienne cuts. Alternatively, you can just use your chef knife for this, you don't really need to use a machine like this. And even for the ends of the carrots, I like like to make sure that I utilize them by busting out my chef knife and making some really thin cuts with the remainder of the carrot so this way we don't lose any product. Once you have all your carrots cut up, place that on top of your slaw and slice up all of your green onions. I'm using one whole bunch of green onions for this because I really like the flavor behind them and what it gives the slaw. But that's not the last thing we're adding. We are also going to use some broccoli for this. Now I like buying my broccoli fresh so that way I can use it for salads but I also like to freeze some of it if I want to use it later for hot food. The broccoli is just going to be 
be roughly chopped right before we place this into our slaw. So now we have this really, really good fibrous broccoli and Brussels sprout slaw that you can really use any sauce you want for this. And while we finish that up, our roasted Brussels sprouts were ready to go. So that way, both things are now done. Our meat has cooled down quite enough, so this way we can place it into our container of choice, giving one to the wife for dinner, and this is also ready to go. Now that our oven is empty, we have room to start cooking off some chicken. I am using about 6 pounds or about 3 kilos worth of chicken, and this is going to be super simple. After drizzling some olive oil on your clean chicken, squeeze in about 2 lemons and 2 limes worth of juice directly into this. You don't have to do anything too fancy with this chicken because we are going to essentially oven steam it. After you have them seasoned with your lime and lemon juice, place this onto a sheet tray with some aluminum foil and then season this with black pepper and salt. Alternatively, you can season this with whatever seasonings you want, do some blackened spice on there, throw some chilies on there, really whatever you want to do. Since I am keeping this simple, I'm just going to take that lemon juice and olive oil that was left over, place this onto the chicken and slightly wrap it up with some more aluminum foil. After you have everything wrapped up, place this into the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or so just so that way all of the chicken steams properly. Now while the chicken is steaming, grab yourself some containers and start loading up all of your prep into those containers. For the Brussels sprouts, I am separating these into smaller containers, so this way they are essentially two portions per container unless you're really hungry and then you just go all in on one container of Brussels sprouts. Now the reason why I like using aluminum foil on the sheet trays to keep it clean is so that way I can use the same sheet tray to start cooling down my rice. After your rice is done cooking, this has actually been done for quite a while and I had it on the extended setting on my zojirushi so that way it just hung out. I like to cool this down on sheet trays and we are using these sacrificial sheet tray that we had used for the Cyberpunk XXL burrito and it still has some use so I'm really happy about that. I like to let my rice hang out for about 30 minutes just like this. Now the slaw is going to go in larger containers because there is quite a bit of it and in hindsight I think I should have roasted off more of the Brussels sprouts instead of making so much slaw. But once you have all of your slaw separated place them into whatever containers you want, throw your lids on them and they're ready to go. What is also nice about having slaw like this is that you can still cook this so don't just eat it raw if you don't really want to. Alright now this has to go into the other fridge because we, we have a second fridge now. We also need to start cooling down our turkey, not chili. This does need to cool down completely before we decide to put it away, so what I like to do for this is make sure I grab myself a bowl to eat because I have been cooking for about four and a half hours now and I am very, very hungry. And I am pleased to report that this is delicious. So grab yourself a sheet tray and dump all of your turkey chili onto this sheet tray to start cooling it down faster. Remember, the more surface area you have when you're cooling down food, the faster it will cool down. So the thin layer of turkey chili will really help it cool down quickly. And now after getting the turkey chili ready to go, our chicken is done steaming. And you can see how this more or less looks like poached chicken. So alternatively, if you don't want to use the oven, you can just poach this in lemon water and just be done with it. Now while that chicken is cooling down, we do need to make sure we scrub all of these pots and pans so that way we don't have to do it later. Once the chili has cooled down enough, place these into your container of choice and I like placing them into the 16 ounce containers. This way I can have one to two portions depending on how hungry I am that day. Now place your lids on these after they have cooled down appropriately and place these into your other refrigerator if you have one because now I'm running out of room. Now that my rice has cooled down, I like placing my rice both in bags and in those smaller containers so that way I can microwave these bags or pull them out of the freezer as necessary. Just make sure you do do remove any excess air from the bags if you're using that method and make sure that these are put away into the, either the fridge or the freezer. Now that the chicken has cooled down enough, I do like to slice this ahead of time. You can see that the chicken is still really nice and moist and I like to make sure that I slice this thin enough so that way I don't really have to work with it later. I can literally pull a bag of chicken or a portion of chicken out of a container and eat it whenever I really want to. I'm throwing these into these larger containers for now because I feel like I'm going to go through a lot of this this week. And that's basically all of our prep. Well guys, I started cooking around 1.30 and it's currently 6.30, so about five hours worth of work. But I made enough food for at least three meals per day for both Rachel and I, so it's gonna go a long way. The one thing I didn't make was breakfast because I don't usually eat breakfast and if I do eat breakfast, it's usually just a couple of eggs and I do have some rice now that I can throw on top of it and really just call it a day. Now I am gonna make myself dinner with a lot of the food that we just made and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to really just put this together. Now what's really nice about meal prep is this part of the meal prep. I'm able to take just one portion of my rice and smash it down like a Neanderthal, place my one piece of kufta right on top of there 
there and throw it in the microwave for 90 seconds. While that's microwaving, I take half a portion of my slaw, season it with salt and black pepper, and then grab some of those marinated onions and use that as the sauce. Now peeling back one of the eggs while everything is getting ready, and grab your bowl out of the microwave after it's hot and dump your slaw directly on top. Now you have this really nice rice bowl ready to go with a nice soft boiled egg, your kufta, your slaw, your rice, hit this with a bit more salt and pepper, and it's easy as that. Making your bowl of food is as easy as that once everything is ready. It was 90 seconds in the microwave. I threw the salad together with some of those pickled onions we made, or you can do whatever dressing you really want and just toss it all together in a nice little bowl of food. If you wanna pick up one of the brand new shirts we have, check out the links below where you can support the channel directly. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed, and remember, keep playing with your food. This is, this is the easiest thing. Now I can just go play League of Legends for seven days straight.